Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenen Nantan Senamad, and I'm an Associate Professor of Bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Okay, so by now you probably have created some data science models and you're ready to move your data science model to the next stage, which is to deploy the model. But before doing that, let's consider some important point here, which is the interpretability of your data science model, which essentially boils down to, can you make sense of your data science model? Does it make sense? Can you interpret it? Do you know which features are important for making the prediction, which are important for class A, which are important for class B? So these are some of the questions that we're gonna cover about today. And so without further ado, let's get started. So first head on to the Data Professor GitHub where we will go to the infographic repository. So here I have compiled all of the infographic that I have drawn so far. And so far it has been five infographic. The first one was starting out on the new year. So the first one was building the machine learning model. And this first one was also converted into a YouTube video. And shortly after, Dr. Tatiana translated this into Portuguese. And I have redrawn the infographic as posted here. So big thanks to her for making this into Portuguese language. And then the second infographic was about handling missing data. So the idea of this infographic and a subsequent video, which I will show the link here as well, was suggested by Marco. So big shout out to Marco for providing that idea. So that resulted in the data preprocessing in our series where we will cover about data preprocessing. So the first one was about handling missing data. And so the infographic was also translated to Portuguese by Dr. Tatiana. And the third infographic is machine learning learning curve. So the translation to Portuguese is also in the making and will be released soon. And the fourth infographic was based on a popular question on the social media, which was what are the skill sets for becoming a data scientist? So I have summarized this into the eight skill set mentioned here and also mentioned in the video on exploring the landscape of data science. So if you haven't watched that, check that out. So links are up in the card here. And then the recent one is interpretability of data science models, which is the topic that we're going to cover today. So let's open up that one and click on the download because the file is rather big. Okay, and so you see that this one starts out with the trained model. So before beginning, let's head on over to the first infographic. So as you can see, the trained model is almost the last stage of the building the machine learning model here. So you normally would start out with your initial data set that you would like to create a model of. And then after that, you're going to do some data preprocessing. You're going to clean the data. You're going to create the data. You're going to remove redundant features from the data. And then you get the pre-processed data set. And then you're going to perform some form of data splitting using different ratios. It could be 80-20, it could be 60-40, 70-30 or it could be more than two data splits. So depending on you, and then you're going to apply some learning algorithms and then perform some form of hyperparameter optimization. And then you're gonna do feature selection in order to reduce the number of feature, which could be potentially high number of feature into a lower set of features. And then you will get your trained model, right? And then the subsequent stage will be mentioned in the next infographic as well. So once you get your trained model, you're gonna use it to create the prediction. You're gonna predict some Y values. And then you're going to evaluate your model performance. So before we can make any meaningful interpretation or meaningful use out of your predictive model, we first must verify that the model is robust. It has good performance. And how do we do that? So depending on your Y variable, which could be quantitative or qualitative, if it is quantitative, you want to use regression, where you could use R square, mean squared error, root mean squared error. If your Y variable is qualitative, you could use the classification, where you could use accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, and the Matthews correlation coefficient. So based on these performance metric, you will determine whether your predictive model is robust or not. 
not. If it is not, you have to retrain the model again. So by retraining the model, you will have to adjust some of your model composition. You might add additional features. You might evaluate and then you figure out that you have left out some important feature which you will compute and add to your data set. Or maybe you want to expand your data set, collect additional samples, and do the model building process again. If the robustness of the prediction model is not good, then you have to repeat that step again until you get a satisfactory model. Once you have a satisfactory model, then you're ready to interpret your models. So some of the key issues in interpreting the models include looking under the hood of the predictive model, figuring out which features are important for making the prediction. For example, if you want to classify whether your molecule is an active molecule or a inactive molecule, then essentially that is a classification problem. You want to classify whether the drug is active or inactive. And once you have identified which features are contributing to your predictive model, you have to determine whether they are contributing to the active group of data samples or the inactive group of data samples. For example, if you have a molecular weight feature or feature one, for example, if feature one is contributing to good prediction, but feature one, is it favorable for active compounds or is it favorable for the inactive molecule? And how do you do that? You might use some form of statistical analysis. You could use essentially comparing the mean of your stratified data set. By stratifying, meaning that you subset your data further. Okay, so for feature one analysis, you will subset your data into active and inactive. Then you will determine what is the average value, what is the mean value for the active group, in particularly to feature one. So what's the average value of feature one for the active group and for the inactive group? And then based on that, you will be able to determine which one has a higher or lower mean or whether they have the same. And then you can use the parity test to statistically test for the statistical significance, whether they are statistically different or not. You could also use box plot to compare between the distribution of feature one between active and inactive group, whether the box have roughly the same distribution. Maybe one has a smaller Q1 and Q3 range and one has larger gap difference and whether they are relatively higher or lower to one another. So you will be able to determine that by performing some additional analysis. And then the next important question is, what is the consequence of the prediction? If your model produces wrong prediction, what is the consequences of that? Is it life-threatening? Is your predictive model influencing the life or death matter of a patient, of a user? For example, it could be assisting surgeons or physicians in diagnosing or in surgery of patients. So if the model produces wrong prediction, that would consequently lead to a life or death matter. So in a similar fashion to a self-driving car, if the prediction model analyzes the situation and produces a wrong advice, it could lead to an accident. And so the next logical step would mean what led to the wrong prediction. You want to understand what led to good prediction or accurate prediction and which leads to wrong prediction. So that would be possibly done by looking at whether your data set has any potential outliers or are you missing some potential features, right? So based on your feature analysis, you could try to think the data set over again, whether you're missing some features that are important that is not in consideration by your predictive model, or maybe there are some situations that are extreme cases that are outliers, and therefore it is outside the applicability domain of your data set or of your predictive model. For example, if you're creating a predictive model for classifying apples, and the classification of apples could be based on the color. It could classify apples as red and green. And let's say that you feed in an image of an orange. Then that orange would be outside the applicability domain of your predictive model because your model has not been trained to recognize an orange. So what can you do in this situation? You retrain the model by feeding in examples of oranges. And so your predictive model would then be updated with information about oranges. And so the iteration will continue on and on and on. If you want to train it with pears, you want to train it with bananas or other fruits. And so another potential issue that might arise is maybe your data has imbalanced data set. Your class labels are imbalanced, meaning that your number of apples to the number of oranges are imbalanced. You might have 10 times the number of apples to the oranges. You might have a thousand apples and only 100 oranges. 
So your model is inherently biased to make a prediction that is favorable for apples. So there are other ways on how you can handle the situation, such as performing undersampling or oversampling. So that is not the scope of this video, and I could cover that in a future video. Okay. So those are some of the major issues that you should consider about in interpreting your model. You're trying to make sense of the model. You're trying to add value to the data. You're trying to provide insights, actionable insights that could help the decision making process. So take a critical look, analyze your model together with your stakeholders, with other departments of your organization, marketing or other business or engineering departments, and figure out together how you can resolve the issue. So once you understand your model, you could interpret your model, then you could put it to action. You, you could then deploy it. So this is inherently tied to model deployment. So understand the model, interpret the model, and then finally you can deploy your model. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.